you can sequence these proteins and then if it was contamination or something, uh, it could fall out anywhere in this giant database of proteins. But if it's really from a dinosaur, it's a very sophisticated and nuanced field. And, you know, to start with a question like, you know, if somebody says like there, there weren't dinosaurs, that's kind of like telling a, a planetary scientist like there's, there's no Jupiter. Or, you know, it feels it's a little just... flat Earth to me. Like when, well, like when people say that, because there's just, when I see things that have such significant evidence and it's, and it's like, like, where, where do we get all this stuff from? You know, it just came out of thin air. Yeah. So I can tell you one thing, which is, um, one way to, to demonstrate it is so now there's a field called molecular paleontology, molecular paleontology. Yeah. And so we can, and we do this in my lab, we can demineralize dinosaur bones and recover routinely now their proteins and blood vessels and, and bone building cells. Proteins have hereditary information in them. It's not as robust as DNA, but you can sequence proteins mm. and make family trees from them. And this was started by a, <clears throat> a friend and colleague of mine, uh, Mary Schweitzer, who was, uh, she used to be at North Carolina State. Um, and we've exchanged lots of grad students and, and done some of this work. You can sequence these proteins and then if it was contamination or something, uh, it could fall out anywhere in this giant database of proteins. But if it's really from a dinosaur, it's going to fall out next to their closest living relatives, which are crocodiles. Crocodiles aren't dinosaurs, but they're the closest living relatives. They look like it. And birds. Birds mm -hmm. are literal dinosaurs. Literal. Literal. And we sequence these proteins, and they fall out between birds and crocodiles. And so we have molecular evidence that these things are what we think they are, that they are dinosaurs. And of course, we have the skeletal evidence as well. And we can see it in, you know, the, the geological record is, is like a layer cake, mm -hmm. right? Except you don't get the whole cake anywhere, right? You get this piece of the cake here and this piece of the cake there. Um, but we know when dinosaurs first appeared, we know how long they persisted, we know exactly when they end. And it doesn't matter if you're in Afghanistan or Antarctica or New Jersey or China, they always start and end exactly where we know them to start and end, right? Like they, they behave geologically, they're predictable. Um, it's obvious that that's the story. Yeah. Now, when, how, approximately how many years ago did we, did, did the first dinosaur that we know of walk the earth? Um, dinos the first dinosaur was about uh, 237 million years ago. Okay. So that's the, the Triassic period. Triassic period. Yeah. The, the Mesozoic, which is the time of dinosaurs, is Triassic, the now famous Jurassic, uh -huh. and the Cretaceous. Okay. Now, how do we, again, a million questions, how do we mark off those eras? What, what behaviorally or that we can observe from dinosaurs makes it change officially from one era to the other? They're, all, they're all defined by extinctions. Mm. And um, and there's a there's a commission called the International Commission on Stratigraphic Nomenclature. What a name! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get um, them some rebranding. And yes, <laughs> they could use it. <laughs> and um, it, it's a large group of scientists, and they uh, define these. There's there's eons, and there's eras, and there's periods, and they're epochs, and they're all they fall fit inside each other, and they define what the boundaries are based on the extinction of certain organisms or the extinction of groups of organisms. Um, and the big boundaries have to do with big extinctions. So the end of the Paleozoic, the start of the Mesozoic, which is the time of the dinosaurs, mm -hmm. that happens when we have the world's worst mass extinction. It, it happens about 250 million years ago. It's two, 255. Uh, it's the end of the Permian period. We lose 95% of species on the planet. So if you're a geologist or a paleontologist and you're working in rocks that are around that boundary, it's very easy to tell which side of the boundary you're on because 95% of the species disappear right. above that. When the dinosaurs go extinct 66 million years ago, that's the end of the Mesozoic era and the start of the Cenozoic era, which we're still in. Again, it's very easy to tell you're at that boundary because 75% of the species go extinct there. But the 75%, that was going to be my next question, the 75% that goes extinct includes all dinosaurs except, except for, for birds. birds. That's Got right. Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. Fascinating. So when dinosaurs were first on the earth, because like most of us out here are looking at this from a layman's perspective and we think about, oh, Jurassic Park, T-Rex running around, raptors, all that. But when they're first on the earth, 
what were some of the, I don't know, recognizable dinosaurs that we might know today that existed in that, I forget the name of it, forget the name of that first, the yeah. Triassic uh-huh. period. We're, we're actually sitting on the Triassic here in Hoboken. We're yeah. sitting on the Triassic? Yeah. What does that mean? Well, the Triassic is the time when, when the supercontinent of Pangaea breaks up. Right. That's and what I was looking for earlier. that means the Atlantic Ocean basically starts to unzip, right? And, and there was a time when you could stand here in Hoboken and look about a mile across the ocean to Africa. <laughs> That's so cool. And so, you know, the the Palisades, which go right up the river here, um, those are basalt flows. Basalt comes from um, magmatic eruptions of ocean-type magma. And that happens here when the Atlantic Ocean forms, when when Pangaea rifts open. And all the gas that was released um, during, during that rifting caused the world's fourth mass extinction. So the evidence of the fourth mass extinction is in the Palisades along the Hudson at the top of New Jersey, and the evidence for the sixth mass, or the fifth mass, mass extinction is at the Fossil Park in southern New Jersey. Not to be confused with my Vinnies and Carmines out there who are looking at other types of extinctions that no. have happened in the Palisades. You know, That's right. Just got to throw that out there. There's yes. been a few since then. Yeah. But, wow. So it's crazy because you, you just wouldn't think that. I mean, look at... Look at the wall right here, what's right across the river. This Mm -hmm. is what we have here now. And the idea that there were like dinosaurs running around here or we're close where it was underwater and the land's over there and the dinosaurs are right there. It's just crazy. At at that time, 255 million years ago, this was an apocalyptic hellscape. This (laughs) this volcanic fissure. It was just it It still is. All right, so the Triassic period, though, the yeah. very first one, so, what types of species, let's start with dinosaurs. dinosaurs what types are of species small. exist? Dinosaurs are, are about the size of a, of a house cat. Oh, right? wow, and so can, they could be a pet. They could menace nothing uh, bigger than a bug at the time. Wow. This is, they evolve into, into probably the hardest time on Earth since there's been complex life on Earth because we've just had this, this horrible mass extinction at the end of the Permian period. Almost everything is dead. The complex life on planet Earth almost goes out of business. Mm. Um, and the first thing that kind of gets the, the jump you know, back are, are crocodiles. And so we're, we're kind of living in a crocodile world um, in the Triassic period. There's an eight-foot-tall bipedal crocodile in the Triassic period. <laughs> so it's running after you. It's like Wally Gator from hell. Yeah, yeah. No, thanks. I'm not <laughs> um, and so dinosaurs evolve into this world, and they, they don't really make a lot of um, headway because of, of the crocodiles dominating everything. So they're small. They're kind of spindly. The oldest one we know of at the moment is Nyasasaurus from Tanzania. Can we pull um, that up, Nyasasaurus? Yeah. Let's do that. Um, but it's tiny. And they stay that way until the fourth mass extinction, which we have the evidence for right along the Hudson here. Mm-hmm. And uh, for some reason, that kind of knocks back the crocodiles and the dinosaurs. <laughs> the dinosaurs are the ones that get the there. Well, no, that's kind of a crazy. I think that might be a CRISPR accident right there. That's a cr- <laughs> <laughs> like a watermelon like and a lizard that. or something. <laughs> that's why I was looking at Ben. I'm like, don't you, don't you open Pandora's box too badly here, my friend. He's like going to come out with like, oh, it's a velociraptor. Sorry. Yeah, it's Nyasa twice the size. Sorry, no. it's, a, it's, it's NYSSA. NYSSA. We got it, Joe. What are we looking at? Yeah, we got to make sure we get it get it right so people aren't seeing the uh, new and, demon and from hell. NYASSA. Yeah. Okay. Right. But it's, it's a little spindly uh, dinosaur. And, and um, you said it's like approximately this size? Yeah, there we go. Um, Which one do you want? I think that... The picture on the upper right looks, looks right good. there. So this thing would have been about this big. You're saying? Yeah, I mean roughly the size of a cat, mm. right? And so you know they're not they're not too tough. Um, now his front, his legs are on the ground bipedal, and then he's got hands, but he's still hunched over in like the position of a cat at the time. Yeah, um, early dinosaurs were all bipedal. Um, these kinds. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.